recently an author wanted me to create a bookmark that she was going to have printed by Vistaprint. So the first thing I do is create a new document. And the document had a custom size of two inches by six inches high with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. So I click OK and there's my document. And the document had a bleed area. In other words, it had a safe area. You could not count on anything being printed out of the safe area. So what I needed to do is to set up some guides so I knew exactly where that safe area was. And the safe area was 0.137 inches. So I create a new horizontal guide at 0.137. And I oiled up my trusty abacus. And I know that the next guide needs to be 5.863. And now I'll create two vertical guides. One at 0.137 and another one at 1.863. So there's my basic document. One thing I learned a long time ago with computers, even as great as they are, you can have a crash at any time. So I save early and I save often. So I'm going to save this as a Photoshop document. And I already have a file on the desktop. So I'm going to save this by the author's name and click Save. And now I'm pretty much ready to go. I don't want to save it as a JPEG. I want to save it as a PSD. So let's back up. Save this as a Photoshop document. And there's my document. Next thing I need to do, I need to bring the book cover in. And the book cover is going to tell me what colors I'm going to use for my text. So I'm actually going to open up the book cover as another document. And there's the book cover. You see, one thing I need to do, I need to do a little bit of work on this, which is why I brought it in as a separate document. I need to get rid of the copyrighted material at the bottom. So if I select this with the rectangular marquee tool and then choose edit, fill, and choose content aware, it's all gone. So now all I need to do is press command D, control D on a Windows machine, and I need to get this into the actual bookmark document. So what I'm going to do is right click this and choose Duplicate Layer. And I'm going to put this in the PSD document that I created for the actual bookmark. And now I can close this. And there's my book cover. I am going to convert this to a smart object. And the theory around smart objects is no matter how often you resize them, you don't degrade the document at all. And I've used this many times, and I find this to be very true. So I'm going to select this layer, and I'm going to rename this to Book Cover. And all I did was double-click the layer to rename it. So there's my book cover layer. And with the layer still selected, I'm going to press Command T, Control T on a Windows machine. And I'm just going to drag one of the outer corners while holding down the Shift key so I resize proportionately and lock it to the guide. Now I'll click the check mark to commit the transformation. And I'm going to select this and drag it
until it's perfectly centered in the document. Now I need to choose a background color for this. White is not going to cut it. So I'm going to click one of my color swatches and then I'm just going to click inside the image to choose a background color. And that's not the right color. Right about there. That looks good. And now I need a color for my text. So I'm going to click the black color swatch and then click inside the actual bookmark text and then click OK. Now I've got my colors set. So I'm going to select my background and press Command Delete. Now I'm not that crazy about the, the actual color. So I've got another option I can choose. I created a screenshot of the author's website, so I'm going to open that up and choose this background color. It's a subtle difference, but it's more powerful color in my estimation. So now I'll select the background again, press Command Delete, and yes, that's a much better color. Now I'll select my book cover, and now I want to have a stroke around the outside of the book cover, a border. So I click the effects icon and choose stroke, and now for my color, I'm going to choose the same color as the text. Click OK, and I want two pixels, and I want this inside. So I'll click OK, and there's my color. All right, so now I need some text. So I'm going to choose my text tool, and I'm going to create a new folder to put the text in. And I'm going to start out with Castellon Pro. And there's my folder. So now I'll take my text tool and at the top of the document, she wanted pet, psychic, cozy mysteries. And I'll commit that and I'll choose my move tool. Now I will center this in the document. The text is a little small, so I'm going to double click the text layer and I'm going to bump this to about 16 points. That's about right. Commit that. Drag this down just a little bit. And now she wanted one more heading at the bottom, the author's name and her website. So I'll click the check mark to commit the text. Select my move tool and I will center this in the document. And notice as I'm dragging the move tool right there. When you see that little purple line, it's in the middle of the document. And now I'm going to press my down arrow key to move it to the bottom of the document. Now the text is too big, so I'm going to double click this layer again. And the first text I'm going to modify is the author's name. I'll change this to 14 points. And that fits with inside the guides. So now I'll move my text tool down to the website text. Select that all. And I will change this to 12 points. I actually need to change that to 11 points. There, that's just about perfect. Now there's one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to separate the text a little bit from the top and bottom. So to do that, I will, I'll click the character icon, and right here I can drag this just a little bit here, and that's the baseline shift, and I'm shifting this down just a little bit, so there's a little bit of separation. And now I'll commit this, and reposition this, and that's just about right. 
Now, I'd like to give her some other choices for text on this. And in the next lesson, I'll show you exactly how I do that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create one. Actually, I'm going to create two more folders for the fonts I'm going to use. And I'll double click the folder I just created and call this Garamond. And I'm going to create one more folder for Myriad Pro. And to change the name of the folder, all I'm doing is double clicking it. And when you're working with multiple folders, it's so helpful to have a name that you can use to identify each folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this text layer. And I can do that by dragging it down to the layer icon. And I'm going to put this in the Garamond folder. And I'm going to duplicate this layer as well. I can also press Command-J or Control-J on a Windows machine to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to put this in the Garamond folder. And I'm going to duplicate each layer one more time. And then I'm going to change the text. I'm going to pause the lesson while I change the text to these fonts. So now I have my three groups, Myriad Pro, Garamond, and Castellon Pro. I've got the Myriad Pro visible now. And if I click this icon, I can open up the folder. And there is my text. And I've got the same thing with Garamond and with Castellon Pro. Now I've got three different choices for the author. I've got Garamond and I've got Castellon Pro. Now what's the easy way to do this? To print each copy and send it to her? No, there's an easier way and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lesson. It's called layer comps. So there you have it. Creating a custom bookmark from scratch in Photoshop CC 2015 and this will work identical in CC 2017.